Good morning, everyone, and welcome today's, to today's Corporate Training Options Technology webinar. Our guest today is John Barrett from Microsoft, and he's going to be presenting to us on the modern workplace. John is a modern uh, workplace Microsoft solutions specialist, um, and he's an expert in this field, so I'm going to hand over to him for our presentation today. Thank you, John. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Rosie. Uh, and I'll just screen share. Give me a second just to get that set up. Can everybody see my screen? Just can't hear anybody else. We can hear you. Thank you. We can hear you. Thank you, John. Thanks. Okay, great. Well, look, welcome everybody to this um, session this morning. I just want to take 15 minutes to talk about um, the modern workplace or well, actually we call it modern work now we've actually dropped the place from the name because um, work really happens anywhere that you are these days and especially that's been accelerated by the sort of unfortunate situation that we've found ourselves in with COVID and I'm going to talk about Microsoft 365 which is our all-encompassing Microsoft offering that 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 covers Office 365 for productivity but it also includes Windows Windows 10 at the endpoint, as well as our enterprise mobility and security suite. And this is an all encompassing suite of capability to help you do kind of three main things. Firstly, to centralize all of your communications and collaboration, be the, be the virtual desktop that you can do the majority of your work in or connect to other applications that are non Microsoft, but um, get surfaced within the Microsoft environment. And it also lets you connect from whatever device you're on, whether it's Windows, Mac, uh, iOS or, or Android, or even just a browser, to the people and information you need anywhere, anytime, on any device, in any place. But it's also letting you do that in a very secure and uh, protected way that, that uh, contains security, privacy and, and, and governance. So I'm a modern workplace specialist at Microsoft. I, I help promote and evangelize these solutions, but I also use them on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm gonna give you uh, a couple of more positioning slides and then, and then move on to um, giving you a demonstration, quick demonstration. So when we're talking to customers about this, and uh, many of them are sort of new to Microsoft 365, we try to do some positioning. We sort of say that, look, you're all familiar with using Outlook and email, but you know, email was always really invented as a messaging platform. It wasn't really invented as a, as a, as a collaboration platform, although that's what people have been, have been using it for, for years. So uh, we've introduced uh, Microsoft 365 and, and the, the hero product within Microsoft 365 is Teams. And Teams can be used in, in two main scenarios. It can be used for the inner loop where we're actually uh, working around the uh, inner parts of your organization where you're internally doing collaboration around, around projects and you have functional teams uh, and you're also collaborating internally but talking about um, existing outside relationships, especially customers and suppliers. So that is where you'd be working in what we call your, your inner loop and you're working, you're working internally. And uh, the primary sort of overused term, but single pane of glass to do that is Microsoft Teams. So I'll actually be showing you Teams and some of you may have been using Teams. We're using Zoom today. I wish we were using Teams, but we um, are using Zoom. But Teams goes way beyond the kinds of things that we're doing here on a, on a Zoom call uh, where, we're, where we're doing you know, video conferencing. It goes, goes into deep collaboration. It can also be used for the outer loop and the outer loop is where you're externally collaborating with, with uh, customers, um, suppliers, partners, you're using, but you're using, importantly, you're using the same tool set. So it is still Teams, but you're using it for external collaboration, customers and suppliers. And, you know, in fact, we've seen an amazing amount of, um, take up of this uh, modern modern work environment front-ended by teams i work with new south wales government and 
New South Wales government has expanded its use of teams over 250 percent in the last in the last quarter, uh, in the last three months. And that has been accelerated by a need to work remotely uh, during these COVID times. But we see it as as continuing as a new normal. Now, you know, talking a little bit more, giving you some more framing about Microsoft 365. You know, what happens is that you start to do some work and you and you pick up a device uh, and the first thing you need to do is kind of get logged onto the device and signed onto the device no matter what that type of that device is and then the system will check your access based on your conditions about where you're located and what kind of device you're you're at at the moment and if there's any risk around your identity um, protect you around security and then and then bring you into your kind of productivity zone. And it's within your productivity zone that we're still using Office 365. So Office 365 is really the, the productivity component of Microsoft 365. And the other components of Microsoft 365 are providing the, 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 the governance and the security and connecting you to, to your devices. Now, another way of looking at, at, uh, at the Office 365 productivity is that it can be really, really thought of as a as a, a whole set of collaboration tools. You know, we're familiar with the basic stuff. We're familiar with, with email. Uh, and some of us may have been using some, some basic things within uh, M365 and, and, and teams like web conferencing. But I'm gonna talk, and instant messaging. But I'm gonna talk today a lot about content creation and collaboration and show you some of the interesting things around uh, machine learning with maybe with an example um, of uh, one or two bots. It can also be used as a regular voice calling platform. We have a number of, of customers who are now using it as the soft phone to dial out to the, the public telephone network when, when you can't be talking to somebody on Teams. And it can also be used as a private social network. Part of Microsoft 365 is something called Yammer. And Yammer is our enterprise private social network for um, collaborating across the organization when you have a lot of queries around uh, maybe where do I go to find somebody that has this level of expertise versus, uh, versus doing uh, structured work that you're kind of you know what you're doing and you just kind of need to get on with it, which is which where you'd be using Teams. So uh, the modern workplace uh, transformation journey is that throughout the day, you're gonna be using a variety of tools. Um, it could be Teams, it could be good old Word, Excel and PowerPoint and Outlook, but there's other tools within this environment as well, um, such as stream for video streaming. It's kind of like your corporate YouTube, as some people describe it. Uh, Yammer for enterprise social networking um, and, and even planner for doing a Kanban boards and doing high level task planning that I'll give you a demonstration of. And lastly, Power Apps and Flow, which is our way of actually executing workflows uh, and digitizing business processes and connecting to um, other systems that that your productivity relies on, uh, be that CRM or uh, service management, ticket management, uh, and other line of business applications. So that is all within Microsoft 365. Now, last slide before we get to the demonstration. Everything that we're doing within Microsoft 365 is feeding something that in the background is called the Microsoft Graph. And the Microsoft Graph is collecting information within your environment, totally private, totally secure, about, about you and your interactions with other people, with people that you're chatting with, documents that you're working on, uh, what part of the organization you belong to, um, and uh, what groups you belong to, and what email you've been working with. And this creates a very uh, useful database of information that can really help guide you uh, as to how to get your work done and even suggest to you um, work that you should know about in your network that you might not know about. So that's the last of the slides. Let me uh, flip to 
uh, Microsoft Teams. And I'm going to talk about Microsoft Teams. And, you know, if you've seen Teams before, you may be familiar with some of the uh, basic uh, chat features within Teams. And you, you may also be familiar with the fact that um, you can you can also book, book meetings in Teams as well. But I'm going to I'm going to focus specifically today uh, on um, on the structured teamwork part of Teams. Now, before I do that, I'm just going to put myself into uh, into do not disturb mode. Let me do that. So I'm in a meeting. That's good. That'll tell people I'm busy. And let's get on with let's get on with the demonstration. Okay, so I'm in I'm in teams and these teams are structural functional teams where I'm conducting most of my work. I've been working at home now for 14 weeks, uh, not that I'm counting, and I've been using uh, this this dashboard basically as the place that I do work uh, most of the day. And most of the work that I do is in uh, projects. Um, it's with functional teams and it's also with customers. So let me, let me, uh, this is an internal team that I've got set up for um, an RFP that Microsoft was responding to. Here's a general team where all of the people that face New South Wales Department of Health work in. I won't show you any of those, but I will show you this uh, external team that we have. This is a great example of where we can collaborate with customers or suppliers. I've set up a community of practice within New South Wales government to collaborate on cybersecurity. And uh, this, this has uh, around about 90 members within it. Um, teams can have uh, thousands of members uh, and you can actually have a, a meeting at the moment for up to 250 people at the same time in a video conference, but there can be many more, more members of a team than that. But a, a, a good working number is usually in the sort of, um, five to five to 100 range is kind of the, the sweet spot. Um, so in this team, I've got a number of posts and this is where, you know, we've, we've had a discussion with our customers uh, on an ongoing basis in a community of practice. We're sharing documents, there's questions and answers. Uh, some of these are coming from internal, some of these are coming from external. This is, this is, this is our chat room. This is kind of the stuff that you would do uh, in, in, in your personal life. You might do it on something like Facebook, but we're having that chat, but we're doing it very privately, very securely with our customers. And, um, and we can go back at any time now and look at the questions and answers. It's also where we're sharing files. And so, this has a complete document management system. Uh, I'm sharing the files here. I can have subfolders. They can be in any format. Um, if I wanted to sort of see what they look like, I, I just open this up and, and, and click. And then um, I'm, into, I'm into the presentation. But notice that I'm not leaving Teams. I'm staying within my dashboard. Um, if, I, if I wanted to, let's go back to that. If I wanted to, I could I could open that up in um, in in good old um, uh, PowerPoint or Word, but I don't have to. It's all within that environment. Um, what's also really important here, let's go to this other team here, is that there's another tool that we have uh, when we're working with projects, and that's a, a task board or a Kanban board. And this uses a, a tool within Teams called Planner. So I can look at all of these major tasks. I can filter them by, um, by the priority and the, and the bucket. Um, and then I can uh, do a chart and look at the activity of all of the tasks that are outstanding. Again, I'm staying within the Teams environment. So a, a common question that I get asked is well this is great this is a this is kind of a a whole another microsoft environment but how does this work with the the other microsoft stuff that i've had for years so um so good question let's go back to uh, let's go back to outlook i'll go back to outlook uh, i'm going to go to email ignore my uh, large number of emails here I'm going to start typing an email. Let's just say that I wanted to 
ask somebody in that team through a chat or I got an email and it was about um, a cybersecurity question. Ignore the fact that I can't type or spell. Um, uh, but what I can do in here is I can just say, send that question to the cybersecurity working group. Um, so let me do that. I'll just say demo only. Blah, blah, blah. So anybody can actually email uh, a chat channel because we've connected um, each channel has an email address. Once you set up a channel, it has an email address and I'll, I'll, I'll send that on. And uh, in a few minutes, we'll, we'll come back and, and see that appear in this environment. Let's give that a minute or two to come through. It's got to go from the email system uh, into Teams. While we're in here, let's also talk about bots. So down the side here, I've got standard features, but I can also add my own bots. I've got, um, and applications. And I love this, this who bot. So let me bring up the who bot. Um, and this is a bot that we've developed at Microsoft, but the bot framework is part of teams. And I want to say somebody, uh, I want to, I'm working with a guy called Andy Huron, but I'd like to know who else Andy Huron is working with. Cause maybe, maybe I can talk to them if I can't get a hold of Andy. So um, who works, who works with uh, Andy Huron? And the bot is thinking about that and has said, I found 15 people. Oh, okay, well, that's really cool. These are 15 people that the graph knows are connected to Andy Huron, either structurally or through activity. In fact, I just happen to know that Richard Crawford is not in the same organization as Andy Huron, but he has been working with him. And in fact, we both cover large, uh, large customers. So then I can find Richard Crawford. And then where would Richard Crawford sit in the organization? Let's have a look at that. And I'm staying again within the Teams environment and it shows me the structure chart. And I go, you know, that's, that's great. I now know where Richard Crawford sits. Oh, he's in the, he's in the finance group. Um, and then I can click the, the chat and um, I will just uh, start up a, a, a chat. Um, hey, Richard. And so, but the point here is I'm staying always within the same environment. And that essentially is what we see as modern work. It's, it's creating the digital tools and the digital infrastructure to just get on with work in a very secure way, but do it in a way that um, I'm not thinking as an end user, what application do I need to go to? Where is that? It all is kind of appearing in this, um, this, this purple, single pane of glass we call we call teams let's just go back to teams and close the loop on that demo i had um, let me go up to the the that cybersecurity working group um, and there is that email that i posted uh, into the chat window so you can see that if i was using email as my main tool uh, or a, and a customer can do this a customer can email something in and it will come into the chat window but now as I reply on 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 that that question and that answer is available to anybody that's in the team so we're getting out of that email single um, single kind of point of conversation and we're getting back into something that is much more collaborative and open look I'll stop my demonstration there I could I could go on um, but in, in essence, I've talked today about uh, Office 365 as being the, the productivity powerhouse behind Microsoft 365. And uh, I'll pause there and maybe wait for questions. I can't unmute myself. There we go. Can you hear me, John? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. That was a great presentation, really informative. and. Um, I am really looking forward to using Teams a lot more in our organisation. We are finding already, Crazy. being Teams users, that um, we're moving away from email every day more and more. And just if we need something, we'll just drop it into the chat box and pass files and information backwards and forwards. And it's so much quicker. <laughs> we did have a question from um, one of our audience. Sousa has asked, is Outlook going to become extinct at, at some time in the future? What are your thoughts on that, John? Oh, no. 
the outlook will not become extinct. Um, outlook, outlook will become smarter and it'll be more deeply connected to um, the other parts of Microsoft 365 like Teams, but no, Outlook is not going away. And we still have a need for messaging. And you know, um, email is really that common baseline that everybody in the world uses now to message. And there will be times when the conversation that you have with somebody needs to be essentially one-to-one -one or private and e email is perfect for that. Um, so email is not going away, but you saw in that demonstration how we're very consciously um, allowing Teams and Outlook to connect to each other so that you can easily take a message from that traditional mailbox and say, look, this is something that really needs to be worked on as a group or shared as a group and send it into Teams and kind of break it out of the, the, the email lane and break it into the, the collaboration lane. But the two are going to sit side by side um, for, for a very long time. And in fact, we're, in, we're investing in Outlook and we, we, email is not going away. That's good. Um, another question from Alicia. Can you use Teams to video call external clients or only chat? I believe the answer is yes. Yes, absolutely. In fact, uh, if, you have, uh, if you're with an organisation, you have licensing for video conferencing for Teams, your, your licensing within your organisation lets you video conference the world. Um, you can invite external parties into a video conference um, as long as you're internally licensed, which you would be if you have an organizational license. And, um, and that's being done on a day-to-day -day basis. In fact, I should talk about two things, video conferencing. If you were just doing it within Teams, um, then you can video conference up to 250 people at the same time. That's a fairly big limit, but it doesn't cover the, the broadcast meetings. Also within your Microsoft 365 envi uh, licensing is something called um, Microsoft uh, Live Events. Now Live Events allows up to 10,000 people to participate in a broadcast. It's not as interactive. So I've got broadcast video and, and people can place their questions into a text chat window. It's, but it's broadcast video, broadcast audio for up to 10,000 participants. And Microsoft used that recently when we had our, um, we, when we had our, uh, one of our worldwide uh, kickoffs, uh, we had, I think close to, close to the 10,000 people in a live event broadcast around the world, but we were asking questions via a chat's window. So if it's less than 250, you can use straight up teams and you can have the interactive uh, questions and answers like we are now with uh, full two way audio and video. Thank you. And we spoke about that yesterday. You, you um, said we didn't have to invite individually everyone by email to the meeting. It just um, is a live event. I'm sorry, the, uh, that they can join by sending a link. They can. You've got to set up your teams meeting in a way that says that um, I'm creating an anonymous login. And, and for security reasons, you can set up Teams meetings that can, can uh, allow anybody to join just as, they ha as if they have a link. But right. you can also set up a, a meeting that says, I require you to have um, an email address that I trust. You can set up the meetings in those two flavors. So you can have anybody can join meetings and you can have um, only people that I invite meetings. Um, and you can also set up a lobby as well so that if you're concerned that... Um, somebody's coming in, you can kind of validate who they are in the virtual lobby before you bring them into the main meeting, the same way that we did it um, here on Zoom. Terrific. Okay. Thank you so much, John. We've really appreciated you giving us your time and your knowledge today. It's been really informative. Um, and I know that uh, everyone in our office has enjoyed it and our audience has as well. Um, for those of you who are interested in further training in the modern workplace, we do have two uh, streams of training available. Blake will drop the links um, to the program into the chat box for you if you'd like to investigate that further. And I'd like to again thank John very much for uh, joining us today as our presenter. We had a comment, comment here, uh, John, that says Max liked, enjoyed the journey slide. <laughs> oh, great. I will share the slides with you, Rosie, if you want to forward them on to any of your customers and thank you for the opportunity, Rosie and, and the whole team at CTO for the, uh, the opportunity to present and, um, and uh, share, share this with you today. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. And thank you everyone for attending and we look forward to seeing you next fortnight. Thank you again, John. Enjoy your day. Speak soon. Bye.